Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today, we're going to begin with day 215, August 2nd, Jeremiah 7 to 10, Judah and Idolatry, Overview. The malignancy of idolatry and hypocrisy has permeated every segment of Judah's national life. Families, 718, teachers, 89, shepherds, 1021, and even prophets and priests, 810, thinking that their privileged position as God's chosen people will ensure their immunity from God's wrath. They continue in a pattern of worthless worship because of their rebellion and indifference. Their homeland will soon be reduced to a heap of ruins by the invading Babylonians, a thought that reduces Jeremiah to a river of tears. Chapter 7, A Last Appeal. Chapter 8, A Leaderless People. Chapter 9, a desolate land, Judah's shame. Chapter 10, a sovereign Lord, God's glory. Insight, the valley of slaughter, Jeremiah 7.32. Topheth comes from a word that means altar or fireplace, 7.32. This was where child sacrifices were offered to the pagan gods Baal and Molech, a practice outlawed by Josiah, 2 Kings 23.10. Also known as the Valley of Ben Hanam, it later became the city dump where fire burned continuously to consume the rubbish. As such, its name became a synonym for hell. Greek Gehenna in Mark 9:43-48. Insight: Mourners for hire. Jeremiah 9:17. Women who mourn at funerals. 9:17 refers to women who were paid to attend funerals and cry out loud. The practice of hiring mourners was widespread in the ancient Near East. It is still practiced in some Middle Eastern cultures today. Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah speaks at the temple. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go to the entrance of the Lord's temple and give this message to the people. O Judah, listen to this message from the Lord. Listen to it, all of you who worship here. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Even now, if you quit your evil ways, I will let you stay in your own land. But don't be fooled by those who promise you safety simply because the Lord's temple is here. They chant, the Lord's temple is here, the Lord's temple is here. But I will be merciful only if you stop your evil thoughts and deeds and start treating each other with justice. Only if you stop exploiting foreigners, orphans, and widows. Only if you stop your murdering. And only if you stop harming yourselves by worshipping idols. Then I will let you stay in this land that I gave to your ancestors to keep forever. Don't be fooled into thinking that you will never suffer because the temple is here. It is a lie. Do you really think you can steal, murder, commit adultery, lie, and burn incense to Baal and all those other new gods of yours? And then come here and stand before me in my temple and chant, we are safe, only to go right back to all those evils again? Don't you yourselves admit that this temple, which bears my name, has become a den of thieves? Surely, I see all the evil going on there. I, the Lord, have spoken. Go now to the place at Shiloh, where I once put the tabernacle that bore my name. See what I did there because of all the wickedness of my people, the Israelites. While you were doing these wicked things, says the Lord, I spoke to you about it repeatedly, but you would not listen. I called out to you, but you refused to answer. So just as I destroyed Shiloh, I will now destroy this temple that bears my name, this temple that you trust in for help, this place that I gave you and your ancestors, and I will send you out of my sight into exile, just as I did your relatives, the people of Israel. 
Judah's persistent idolatry. Pray no more for these people, Jeremiah. Do not weep or pray for them, and don't beg me to help them, for I will not listen to you. Don't you see what they are doing throughout the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? No wonder I am so angry. Watch how the children gather wood and the fathers build sacrificial fires. See how the women knead dough and make cakes to offer to the queen of heaven? And they pour out liquid offerings to their other idol gods. Am I the one they are hurting? Ask the Lord. Most of all, they hurt themselves to their own shame. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will pour out my terrible fury on this place. Its people, animals, trees, and crops will be consumed by the unquenchable fire of my anger. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Take your burnt offerings and your other sacrifices and eat them yourselves. When I led your ancestors out of Egypt, it was not burnt offerings and sacrifices I wanted from them. This is what I told them, Obey me, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Do everything as I say, and all will be well. But my people would not listen to me. They kept doing whatever they wanted, following the stubborn desires of their evil hearts. They went backward instead of forward. From the day your ancestors left Egypt until now, I have continued to send my servants, the prophets, day in and day out. But my people have not listened to me or even tried to hear. They have been stubborn and sinful, even worse than their ancestors. Tell them all this, but do not expect them to listen. Shout out your warnings, but do not expect them to respond. Say to them, this is the nation whose people will not obey the Lord their God and who refuse to be taught. Truth has vanished from among them. It is no longer heard on their lips. Shave your head in mourning and weep alone on the mountains. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken this generation that has provoked his fury. The valley of slaughter. The people of Judah have sinned before my very eyes, says the Lord. They have set up their abominable idols right in the temple that bears my name, defiling it. They have built pagan shrines at Tophet, the garbage dump in the valley of ben Hanam, and there they burn their sons and daughters in the fire. I have never commanded such a horrible deed. It never even crossed my mind to command such a thing. So beware, for the time is coming, says the Lord, when that garbage dump will no longer be called Tophet, or the valley of ben Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. They will bury the bodies in Topeth until they have no more room for them. The bodies of my people will be food for the vultures and wild animals, and no one will be left to scare them away. I will put an end to the happy singing and laughter in the streets of Jerusalem. The joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will no longer be heard in the towns of Judah. The land will lie in complete desolation. Jeremiah chapter 8 In that day, says the Lord, the enemy will break open the graves of the kings and officials of Judah and the graves of the priests, prophets, and common people of Jerusalem. They will spread out their bones on the ground before the sun, moon, and stars. The gods my people have loved, served, and worshipped. Their bones will not be gathered up again or buried, but will be scattered on the ground like manure. And the people of this evil nation who survive will wish to die rather than live where I will send them. I, the Lord of Heaven's armies, have spoken. Deception by false prophets. Jeremiah, say to the people, this is what the Lord says. When people fall down, don't they get up again? When they discover they're on the wrong road, don't they turn back? Then why do these people stay on their self-destructive path? Why do the people of Jerusalem refuse to turn back? They cling tightly to their lies and will not turn around. I listen to their conversations and don't hear a word of truth. Is anyone sorry for doing wrong? Does anyone say what a terrible thing I have done? No. All are running down the path of sin as swiftly as a horse galloping into battle. Even the stalk that flies across the sky knows the time of her migration, as do the turtle dove, the swallow, and the crane. They all return at the proper time each year. But not my people. They do not know the Lord's laws. 
How can you say we are wise because we have the word of the Lord when your teachers have twisted it by writing lies? These wise teachers will fall into the trap of their own foolishness, for they have rejected the word of the Lord. Are they so wise after all? I will give their wives to others and their farms to strangers. From the least to the greatest, their lives are ruled by greed. Yes, even my prophets and priests are like that. They are all frauds. They offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wounds. They give assurance of peace when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of these disgusting actions? Not at all. They don't even know how to blush. Therefore, they will lie among the slaughtered. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. I will surely consume them. There will be no more harvest of figs and grapes. Their fruit trees will all die. Whatever I gave them will soon be gone. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the people will say, Why should we wait here to die? Come, let's go to the fortified towns and die there. For the Lord our God has decreed our destruction and has given us a cup of poison to drink because we sinned against the Lord. We hoped for peace, but no peace came. We hope for a time of healing, but found only terror. The snorting of the enemy's war horses can be heard all the way from the land of Dan in the north. The neighing of their stallions make the whole land tremble. They are coming to devour the land and everything in it, cities and people alike. I will send these enemy troops among you like poisonous snakes you cannot charm. They will bite you, and you will die. I. The Lord have spoken. Jeremiah weeps for sinful Judah. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem? The people asked. Is there a king no longer there? Or why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. The harvest is finished, and the summer is gone, the people cry. Yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and am overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? Jeremiah chapter 9 If only my head were a pool of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night. For all my people who have been slaughtered, all oh, that I could go away and forget my people and live in a traveler's shack in the desert, for they are all adulterers, a pack of treacherous liars. Judgment for disobedience. My people bend their tongues like bows to shoot out lies. They refuse to stand up for the truth. They only go from bad to worse. They do not know me, says the Lord. Beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother, for a brother takes advantage of brother, and friend slanders friend. They all fool and defraud each other. No one tells the truth. With practiced tongues, they tell lies. They wear themselves out with all their sinning. They pile lie upon lie, and utterly refuse to acknowledge me, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. See, I will melt them down in a crucible and test them like metal. What else can I do with my people? For their tongues shoot lies like poisoned arrows. They speak friendly words to their neighbors, while scheming in their heart to kill them. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? I will weep for the mountains, and wail for the wilderness pastures, for they are desolate and empty of life. The lowing of cattle is heard no more. The birds and wild animals have all fled. I will make Jerusalem into a heap of ruins, says the Lord. It will be a place haunted by jackals. The towns of Judah will be ghost towns with no one living in them. Who is wise enough to understand all this? Who has been instructed by the Lord and can explain it to others? Why has the land been so ruined that no one dares to travel through it? The Lord replies, This has happened because my people have abandoned my instructions. They have refused to obey what I said. Instead, they have stubbornly followed 
their own desires and worship the images of Baal as their ancestors taught them. So now, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says, Look, I will feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink. I will scatter them around the world in places they and their ancestors never heard of. And even there I will chase them with the sword until I have destroyed them completely, weeping in Jerusalem. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Consider all this and call for the mourners. Send for the women who mourn at funerals. Quick, begin your weeping. Let the tears flow from your eyes. Hear the people of Jerusalem crying in despair. We are ruined. We are completely humiliated. We must leave our land because our homes have been torn down. Listen, you women, to the words of the Lord. Open your ears to what he has to say. Teach your daughters to wail. Teach one another how to lament. For death has crept in through our windows and has entered our mansions. It has killed off the flower of our youth. Children no longer play in the streets, and young men no longer gather in the squares. This is what the Lord says. Bodies will be scattered across the fields like clumps of manure, like bundles of grain after the harvest. No one will be left to bury them. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. A time is coming, says the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised in body but not in spirit. The Egyptians, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, the people who live in the desert in remote places, and yes, even the people of Judah, and like all these pagan nations, the people of Israel also have uncircumcised hearts. Jeremiah chapter 10. Idolatry brings destruction. Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O Israel. This is what the Lord says. Don't act like the other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Do not be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. Their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree and a craftsman carves an idol. They decorate it with gold and silver and then fasten it securely with hammer and nails so it won't fall over. Their gods are like helpless scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak, and they need to be carried because they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of such gods, for they can neither harm you nor do you any good. Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great and your name is full of power. Who would not fear you, O king of nations? That title belongs to you alone. Among all the wise people of the earth and in all the kingdoms of the world, there is no one like you. People who worship idols are stupid and foolish. The things they worship are made of wood. They bring beaten sheets of silver from Tashish and gold from Uphaz. And they give these materials to skillful craftsmen who make their idols. Then they dress these gods in royal blue and purple robes made by expert tailors. But the Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and the everlasting king. The whole earth trembles at his anger. The nations cannot stand up to his wrath. Say this to those who worship other gods. Your so-called gods who did not make the heavens and earth will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. But the Lord made the earth by his power, and he preserves it by his wisdom. With his own understanding, he stretched out the heavens. When he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from his storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make. For their carefully shaped works are a fraud. 
These idols have no breath or power. Idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning, they will all be destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including Israel, his own special possession. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. The coming destruction. Pack your bags and prepare to leave. The siege is about to begin. For this is what the Lord says. Suddenly, I will fling out all you who live in this land. I will pour great troubles upon you. And at last you will feel my anger. My wound is severe. And my grief is great. My sickness is incurable. But I must bear it. My home is gone. And no one is left to help me rebuild it. My children have been taken away. And I will never see them again. The shepherds of my people have lost their senses. They no longer seek wisdom from the Lord. Therefore, they fail completely, and their flocks are scattered. Listen, hear the terrifying roar of great armies as they roll down from the north. The towns of Judah will be destroyed and become a haunt for jackals. Jeremiah's Prayer I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. So correct me, Lord, but please be gentle. Do not correct me in anger, for I would die. Pour out your wrath on the nations that refuse to acknowledge you, on the peoples that do not call upon your name. For they have devoured your people, Israel. They have devoured and consumed them, making the land a desolate wilderness. My Daily Walk Make a list of some things you have reason to take pride in your financial success, physical strength, education, or family. Which item gives you the greatest sense of satisfaction? Did you know there is something in which God wants you to glory? It isn't your bank account, your muscles, or your mind. It is your relationship with Him. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth. 9, 23-24 Your personal relationship with the God of creation should be your source of greatest pride. But before you can enjoy that kind of relationship, you must first experience it through personal faith in His Son, Jesus. Turn to John 5.24 and read about the relationship that you can glory in today. As a neglected God intends toward weeds, so the faithless life tends toward ungodly chaos. That is so true. That's all for today, my friends. Have a great day and keep up the good work. And God bless. And I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.